So recently, we created a two-in-one machine for Twitch streamers using Unraid and virtualization to capitalize on the high core count of Intel's Core i9 processors. And the results got us wondering, well, just what other practical applications could such a setup have? Also, you guys were wondering just how we got the whole thing working. So, thanks to Intel sponsoring this follow-up project, we are about to boldly go where very few men have gone before and create a triple-headed VR gaming setup with the whole thing running off of one tower and actually one CPU. As you probably know, VR gaming is a demanding workload for both your CPU and your GPU. So when we set out to put together a system that could not only run AAA VR titles like Star Trek Bridge Crew, but actually handle three instances concurrently, we knew we were gonna need the best of the best. So we'll start with the CPU. If we were running a single instance of Bridge Crew, a modern processor like an Intel Core i7-8700K would be a great choice. But since we're running three and we need a couple of cores left over for our hypervisor, we chose the Intel Core i9-7960X. So you can actually see with all three of our gaming rigs running at about 70 to 90% utilization, this CPU is still capable of running at nearly four gigahertz, which means no dropped frames in our game due to CPU bottlenecks. I'm afraid to touch this thing too hard. It's a little fragile. Anyway, for RAM, we went with 64 gigs of 3200 megahertz G-Skill Trident DDR4 in a quad channel configuration. And that last bit is important because it allows us to give 16 gigs of memory to each of our gaming rigs with some left over. And while very few desktop workloads benefit from quad channel memory, when three demanding workloads are hitting it at once, well, it's a lot more important than usual to have all the bandwidth you can get. Now for our graphics cards, we actually ended up with a mixture of different NVIDIA VR capable cards, ranging from the GTX 1070 all the way up to the Titan XP. Now, the point we were trying to make here using different cards is that as long as we have enough CPU and memory resources and they're above a certain threshold, it actually doesn't matter what mixture of video cards we use. Now, the motherboard, on the other hand, was a really important piece of the puzzle. You can't always count on virtualization features to be implemented correctly in the UEFI BIOS. So we turned to the same ASUS Prime X299 Deluxe from our gaming and streaming combo machine. Now, let's look at some special pieces that we needed for this config. One of the limitations of KVM, the underlying virtualization tech that Unraid uses, is that if you pass a USB device through to a virtual machine, like say for example, a mouse, it won't be hot pluggable by default. And if you have more than one of the same peripheral, like all of our Vives, they would all have to be passed through to the same VM, which obviously wouldn't have worked very well for our demo of three people running their own discrete copies of the game in multiplayer mode. Fortunately, ugh, this guy right here, this thing exists. It's a single USB PCIe expansion card that has four discrete controller chips on it. So that means each of them can be passed through to a separate VM without any performance bottlenecking. Then, this is cool, when you pass the whole controller through to a VM, you also get hot plug support. So we just used a few cheap hubs and now each of our VMs can have multiple USB devices, all of which are hot pluggable. Next up is another sort of KVM, but this one has nothing to do with virtualization. This right here is the Level 1 Tax 4 port KVM switch. It is super expensive at over 300 US dollars, but it's DisplayPort 1.2 meaning that it is 4K, 60 hertz compatible, and apparently it even works with FreeSync and G-Sync if both your connected monitor and graphics card support them. Now, it wasn't strictly speaking necessary, 
but it allowed us to use a single monitor, keyboard, and mouse to quickly switch between all of our virtual machines for configuration using this console right here. Finally, we've got our handy dandy blinders here. You see, if one Vive headset can see both its own lighthouses and another one, you are gonna have a bad time. And then we had some weird timeout issues with our rifts, even on a certified USB controller, so we just put up these cloths. Now we can walk you guys through the steps required to set up a configuration like this. First, we need to land in the Unraid web UI, where we'll assign an SSD cache to run our VMs off of, and hey, did I mention before, we've got four cores and 16 gigs of RAM left for Unraid? Well, we can use 60 terabytes worth of Seagate's 12 terabyte Iron Wolf Pros and throw those in an Unraid array where they can safely store personal data off the public cloud or even serve up transcoded media files via Plex. Then what we're gonna do is jump into the VMs tab where we need to configure our basic VMs, set up pass-through for our graphics cards. This is kind of the special Unraid sauce that allows high performance gaming in VMs and set up pass-through for our USB controllers. From there, we need some KVM specific drivers for Windows, and then it is mostly business as usual. Keep in mind though, that without three discrete sound cards, you'll be relying on the HDMI audio built into your graphics card, or in our case, the USB audio device built into your VR headset. Oh, and uh, here's a special headache we got to experience, you see. We had to fit three dual slot video cards and a USB card into a six slot motherboard. Now normally, Unraid needs an additional video card for itself, bringing the total card count to more than the board physically has. So we solved that issue by grabbing the primary card's BIOS, modifying it, and then presenting that BIOS to Unraid as if it was an actual card. Yay, virtual graphics card. Um, for a mainstream board with onboard graphics, this step would probably be unnecessary, but with a CPU that fits into a mainstream board, this kind of performance wouldn't be possible. So this was the most elegant workaround that we could find. And quite honestly, it's pretty darn elegant. Every one of our VMs is capable of delivering a smooth, steady VR gaming experience concurrently and this is all thanks to the recent drop in price, not to mention increase in clock speeds of high core count desktop CPUs and virtualization technology. So a huge thanks to Intel for sponsoring this demo and the folks at Unraid for helping us out whenever we got stuck. John, you rock. And Tom and Eric, you guys are cool too. So thanks for watching guys. If you just liked this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, or consider checking out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured in the video description. Also linked in the description is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should totally join.